Hello, welcome to the third part of SaltStack video. This video focuses on Juno Syslog engine. In the previous videos, we had a look at SaltStack architecture, the Salt Master, Minion, and how they interact with each other. Juno's proxy, which helps to control Juniper devices via SaltStack without actually having to install Salt on the Juniper device. We also looked at the Juno's execution and state modules which help to send commands and configurations to Juno's devices. In this video, we'll explore the SALT event system, the Juno syslog engine, and the reactor system. So let us begin with SALT event system. SALT provides methods to fire off events on the master or the minion event bus. SALT has a unique ability to react to these specific events. This is very useful for event-based automation. We can design our SALT system to react to certain network events and take action based on the type of event. Juno syslog engine. SALT has a concept of engines which are long-running external processes managed by SALT. For example, if an engine stops, SALT will automatically restart it. The Juno syslog engine listens to syslog events from various Juniper devices, extracts the event information from the syslog data, and sends it on the master or the minion event bus. The syslog engine can run on both master and the minion. The user has the ability to control the type of events which will be sent on the event bus. Reactors The reactor system provides SALT with the ability to take actions according to events. The events which are generated on the event bus have two parts. The first part is the name of the event or the tag. It is also known as topic or ID. The second part is the data part. The data part contains information about the event, such as the time at which the event occurred, the daemons which were affected, the severity of the event. So the reactor system binds certain SLS files to specific event tags on the master. These SLS files are known as reactor files. In the reactor files, we define the reaction the system must have to a particular event. So let us have a look at the Juno syslog engine and the reactor system. My screen is divided into two parts. The left part is the salt system. For this demo, I'll be running the SALT master and the Juno's proxy minion on the same system. On the right side, I have my Juno's device. Since the reactor system works only on the master, I'll be running my syslog engine on the master. We can also run the engine on the minion. However, to run the Juno's syslog engine, we have two dependencies, pyparsing and twisted. Ensure that both the libraries are installed on the SALT system. So to start an engine, we need to have certain configuration in the master config file, which is present at slash etc slash salt. First, we'll look at the minimum configuration required to start the Juno syslog engine. Next, we'll move on to an advanced example. So in the engine section, we write the name of the engine, which is Juno syslog, and then we define the port at which the engine will be running. This is the minimum configuration required to start the Juno syslog engine. Next, we'll start the salt master in the debug mode to see if the engine has started or not. Okay, so my master has started. If we search for Juno's, we see that we have a log message saying starting Juno's syslog engine and the port number. So now we know the Juno syslog engine has started. Next, we need to configure our Juno's device to send events on this engine. We do this using set command, set system syslog, host, the IP of my salt system, the port at which events are to be sent, the facilities, any means all the daemons will send all its events to the engine. Next, the type of event. So this is the configuration required on the box to send events to the engine. Here we see we have started receiving events on the Juno syslog engine. 
All right, let us move on to the next example. Let us look at the additional arguments the engine takes. First, we have the topic. The user can define the topic the event will have as long as it starts with Juniper slash syslog. So the syslog data contains certain fields such as daemon, hostname, host IP, severity, priority, event, which is nothing but the name of the event. A user can make topic from combination of any of these. By default, the topic is JNPR slash syslog slash hostname slash event. In this particular case, my topic is JNPR syslog host IP daemon event. With this particular topic string, we will be able to get events such as the one shown on the screen. Next, I have filters. So I want events which were generated by MGD and SSHD only. I can also have another filter called severity. In this case, the engine will only send events which came from MGD or SSHD and had severity 6. For now, we'll ignore the last reactor section. We'll come back to it later. All right, so once we have the engine set up, we'll start the salt master and we'll also start the salt proxy because that is needed for the reactor system. We'll see why it is needed later. Okay, so both my master and proxy are up and running. So now let us have a look at the events which are generated on the master event bus. For that, we have salt run state.event command. All right, let us let me do something on the de Juno's device and have a look at the corresponding events which are generated on the master. You can see I have UI auth event login event. So the topic is JNPR syslog. The IP of my device the daemon which is MGD and at last is the event name UI auth event. This corresponds to the topic which we defined in the salt master. Let us do something else. As you see we have the corresponding events on the master. So this was the Juno syslog engine. Now let us put the reactor in place. For this demo, I have designed a reactor system such that every time a commit occurs on my Juno's device, a reactor is triggered on the salt which will check all the interfaces of my Juno's device and if any of the interface is down by mistake, it will bring it back up. To start the reactor system, we first begin with the master config file. Let us have a look at the last reactor section. In this, I have two things. The first is the event tag, which is JNPR syslog star. Star indicates that for all the host IPs, I want the reactor file to be triggered. Next is daemon mgd and the event name, which is UI commit completed. The next argument is the path to the reactor file. So whenever a event with UI commit completed tag is received on the salt master, react to commit SLS file will be triggered. Let us have a look at the react to commit file. This is somewhat similar to our normal state files. First, we have ID or the name of the task which we are going to perform. Next, we have the keyword local. Local means that we are going to run the function on the local system. Next, we have state.apply. We are already familiar with state.apply. This is used to run state files on a specific minion. Next, we have target, which is the name of the minion. The reactor files have access to all the event data. I am leveraging this data to mention the target proxy minion. The host name of my Juno's device is also the name of my Juno's proxy, which is my target. Next are the arguments which I want to give to state.apply. So the check interface is the SLS file which will be executed by state.apply. If you notice, the way I have written the reactor file is similar to the CLI command I would have executed on the salt master if I wanted to run check interface state file on my Juno's proxy minion. Let us break it down. First, we have the keyword salt, which corresponds to the keyword local in my reactor system. Next, we have the name of the minion, which I mentioned in my target. After that, I have state.apply, which is appended with the local keyword. 
and after that I have my check interface argument which I will supply to state.apply. In the reactor file, I mention it in the arg section. So this is my reactor file which is going to trigger check interface state file on my proxy minion. So let us have a look at the check interface state file. Here you can see in the first line, I am running the junos.rpc execution module to query interface information about the device and I am getting it in JSON format. Next, I am parsing the JSON data and inspecting the admin status of each of the interface. If any of the interface is down, I will install the interface up.set configuration file on my Junos device. As we saw in earlier videos, we can pass variables to the configuration. In this case, I am passing the interface name dynamically to interface up.set because we cannot predict which interface is going to go down. So this state file is going to install interface up.set. Let us have a look at interface up.set now. This file has nothing but configuration to bring an interface back up. All right, so this is the whole reactor system. Confused? Not to worry. I have a graphical representation of the same. Let us have a look at it. So on my system, I have a salt master and a Junos proxy running. I also have the Junos syslog engine running. First, we start with the master configuration where I map the event tag and the reactor file to execute when that particular event occurs. So when the UI commit completed event will come on the master bus, react to commit file will be executed. In react to commit file, I have defined that run the check interface SLS file on my Junos proxy. So next, check interface state file will be run on the Junos proxy. In the check interface file, I am querying the interface information and checking the admin status of each interface. Suppose for one of the interface, I see that the admin status is down. So we'll install interface up.set on the Junos device. So this is the reactor system. Okay, so let us see the reactor system live in action. So currently I have the master and the Junos proxy minion running. Let us have a look at the events we are getting on the master event bus. So as you can see our engine is working. So now let us disable an interface. As you can see, I have disabled LO0. So let me hit commit. You can see even after the commit was completed, the master was still running because the reactor system was going on. So you can see here my check dot interface state file was run and I successfully loaded and committed my interface up config file. We will check the interface LO0 once again and the disable tag should have disappeared. Yeah, as you can see my LO0 interface is up again. So even if someone had disabled an interface by mistake, during the commit time, SALT would have checked for it and brought it back up without any manual intervention. This is how we can leverage Juno's syslog and SALT reactor system for event-based automation. This is all for today. Thank you.